Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. This is an episode where we are going to tackle the age-old question. What would a miniature look like if you sort of draped it in a carpet from the 80s or something? Well, yeah. Um, perhaps you have never asked yourself that question and, and I honestly haven't either. But uh, somehow that sort of is how the uh, mini ended up looking. Um, but anyway, uh, this is a tutorial so of course I'm going to show you uh, exactly how I achieved that very stylish look. So I started off with a model that's been primed with, a, I think it was white scars, like a white primer. And then I just took a pencil and started um, doodling some designs. Um, I had originally thought about doing some sort of Viking-ish designs, but they were, I think, a little bit too complicated. Uh, so I just uh, ended up doing a little bit of swirls and triangles and, you know, semicircles and stuff, which worked out, you know, Pretty cool as well, um, but I mean, at some point perhaps it would be fun to go with the Vi with the Viking designs as well. Then I took a contrast paint. This one is Talasar Blue, and I started painting in the designs. And it was a little bit tricky to be completely accurate with the pencil. I mean, a, a pencil and a small rounded model are not always sort of the best things to combine. And um, so I tried to neaten it up a little bit with the contrast paint here. Um, and then I just thought, well, I mean, I'm going to do uh, it like edge highlights and a black outline and stuff. So I didn't have to be too careful, but at the same time, trying to to make sure that I could sort of recognize the designs once I had filled them in. Then I took another contrast paint. This is Sigwald Burgundy, which is sort of a nice, rich, pinkish Bordeaux color. And um, I, I usually use... Um, Volopus Pink, that's my favorite pink contrast paint, but I thought I wanted to, I mean, sort of be a little bit adventurous, I suppose. I don't know if you can call it being adventurous if you choose, I mean, just another shade of pink um, <laughs> when you always use pink on your models. But anyways, that's, uh, that's where that ended up. Then once I had filled in the designs, I took my Black Legion, also contrast paint. This is the blackest of the black contrast paint and I started to do an outline to make sure I got the designs exactly as I wanted them. As you can see I only did this one part of the leg here because I wasn't sure how it would look. I've never tried anything like this before and so I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of time painting in all sorts of designs on the entire model and filling it out with contrast paints only then to realize that well this was not going to work. So I only did the, this part of the leg first because this was just I mean, this this was just an experiment. It was just because I wanted, um, I just finished painting my big chaos night, and I wanted something fun and like an easy smaller project where I could just do whatever I wanted to. Um, so yeah, uh, hence uh, hence the space marine. Then I took some blue paint. This is blaster blue from Huge Miniatures, and uh, uh, the range of colors I'm using from them on this project are all uh, fluorescent paints, which is really cool. Um, and I mix that with a bit of white. I'm using uh, matte white from the Army Painter, uh, the white color I'm always using. And then I just uh, I mix it up so so that I had a very nice light blue that would make a nice contrast to the uh, base paint co coat in uh, with the Talasar blue. And then I just painted a, an outline of every single little <laughs> little uh, swirl and triangle and so on. Uh, I tried to be relatively neat. Again, I I'm going to clean this up later on, but trying to be relatively neat and also making sure that you can still see uh, the darker uh, contrast paint in the middle so you have this nice sort of layered effect. Then I went on to the burgundy part and I, for that I grabbed uh, also uh, paint from Huge Miniatures. This one is cyber pink and I did exactly the same thing there. Um, this was just straight out of the bottle. I haven't mixed it with anything. It's just that the, the blue paint from Huge Miniatures is a little bit darker and you couldn't, I tried it out and you couldn't really, really tell that it was there. So that's why I mixed it with the white. But this one is just as it is fr uh, straight from the bottle. And uh, I think the blue looks nice, but I think it's much more satisfying to be painting in the pink because the contrast is a little bit bigger and also because, I mean, it's pink. It's always so much fun painting with pink. It just gets so vibrant and bright and yeah, I don't know. Um, there's just some, something cool about p painting with pink, I think. Then lastly, I went over the designs with just a tiny bit of white just to uh, sort of uh, make some 
some really nice sharp highlights that will also contrast well once I get uh, get all the black uh, designs painted up uh, as an outline. And uh, I take a little bit of care not to put too much white because I do, do not want it to look like too much of a pastel thing. Um, I mean, at this point, I could already tell that this was going to be a silly miniature and it was going to look, uh, well, like... I mean, it reminds me of bus seats from the from the 80s or 90s when, you know, the buses came to pick us up from school or whatever. Uh, so this is not by far a stylish project. But anyways, uh, I didn't want it to be too pastel. Then when I was done with the white, I took my Black Legion and I uh, redid all the black outlines. Um, that was the last bit of the process here on the legs. So I wanted it to look nice and sharp and... Um, yeah, really, really sort of neat because I think if you don't do this uh, carefully, it will end up looking even more uh, like a mess than it already does. Then once I painted the most of the model in pink and blue, I decided that I wanted to go for another uh, color scheme on the shoulder pads and on the helmet. And um, not particularly because I thought it would look like pretty or anything but just because well this was the first time I've tried painting in this design and I'm not going to do an entire army or anything like this this is just a one-off for a fun project and so I thought well why not just go to town and do something uh, well that wouldn't exactly look perhaps really nice but would be fun to try out I just really wanted to try out these colors so once I had done the uh, the swirls and and designs on the shoulder pad I took my a green contrast paint. This is a warp lightning, and I started painting painting in the designs with that one. Uh, it's my favorite green contrast paint, just because it's uh, uh, well nice and bright, but still gives um, enough of a base color that you can actually highlight it, and it'll look cool. Um, I also really like the scorpion green one because that is so bright. Um, but for this particular project, I thought it would be better with something that was a little bit darker. Then with the green designs painted in, I grabbed a red contrast paint. This is Blood Angels Red, so uh, one of the older contrast paints along with the Warp Lightning. Um, and again, you can get brighter uh, red contrast paints than this one. Um, but I wanted something that was, as with the green, dark enough that you could actually highlight it and you could uh, sort of easily tell the difference between the base color and the highlights. So uh, yeah, and I mean, besides I like Blood Angels Red, I think it's a nice red contrast paint. Then I did the black outline once again using the Black Legion to make sure that I had the designs uh, the way I wanted them before I started highlighting them. For highlighting the red, I used another paint from Huge Miniatures. This one is called Radar Red and is also fluorescent, which is really, really cool. It looks a little bit pale here, um, a little bit more pastel than it looks in real life. Uh, but I guess, but I think you can still tell that it, it's uh, sort of an, a decent way of highlighting here. Um, yeah. It looks a little bit more like peach or something, but it is actually quite a nice vibrant uh, reddish color uh, when you see it in real life. And once I was happy with the red, I grabbed uh, another paint from Huge Miniatures. This one is called uh, Laser Orange and I used that for highlighting the, uh, the reddish bits here. Um, and again, it looks a little bit pale here, but in real life, the orange really pops. I mean, that, this, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's very fluorescent in real life. <laughs> That's for sure. It's really cool. And lastly, just to really make sure the red uh, parts on the shoulder blades popped, I added a tiny bit of neon yellow. Uh, this one is called Starfire Yellow, and it's also from Huge Miniatures. Just a slight touch, uh, just the way I also highlighted the blue and pink uh, parts of the armor with a little bit of white. I used, uh, I used this uh, neon yellow here. Then for the green parts of the armor, I used a, well, funny enough, uh, a fluorescent green paint. This is called Quantum Green, also from Huge Miniatures. And uh, I just did exactly the same thing as I did with all the other parts of the armor, highlighting it while trying to make sure that you could still see the uh, sort of base color in the middle of each design. Some of the designs here on the shoulder plates I had made a little bit too small, uh, so it was actually difficult uh, for me to get that exact effect, but I think it worked well enough. And then uh, lastly, I also highlighted this with the um, Starfire Yellow, um, both because I thought, I mean, it make, made sense to have some uh, really nice vibrant 
yellow on, on a green shoulder plate as a highlight, but also to make sure that it was, wouldn't be I mean, too confusing. I know this is a very confusing color scheme, but still, yeah. <laughs> Trying just to <laughs> keep a slight touch of sanity uh, in this madness of uh, that is this model. And then uh, as the very last thing, I again uh, did the black outline with the black legion. And then I had an idea that probably wasn't the best idea. I thought, why not try to uh, go over all the uh, armor bits with some um, some some uh, shiny like gloss varnish? Um, and I mean, it does make the it does make the the colors stand out even more and make them look a little bit richer. And I think in real life, uh, it actually looks okay. But as you can see here on a photo, it, I mean, it doesn't photograph well. <laughs> and so perhaps I should not have done that. On the other hand, I mean, this was just a purely for fun project. And I really wanted to test out and see how, how a gloss varnish would look on a model. So I did that and I think, uh, well, now I've tried it and um, I probably won't do it again. Um, I mean, not over an entire model at least. Um, well, I don't know. Perhaps it would have worked a little bit better if I didn't have to brush it on, but I had like used an airbrush or something, but I didn't want to break out the airbrush. So I just used the brush because I'm a lazy painter. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is the finished model. I, I think this was really, really fun. Um, and I mean, it's especially fun when you paint with fluorescent paints because they will glow under a UV light and it makes the model look even more insane than, in, than it already does. So uh, that's definitely an added bonus for me at least. Um, anyways, I think this was a re really fun project and it's uh, it's always cool trying something new. Um, just, just for the heck of it and just for, you know, seeing, well, what can you do and how will it look? And I think... Um, I mean, I have chosen some very conflicting color schemes with the green and red versus the blue and pink. Um, I did the gloss varnish and all sorts of things where I think, okay, this model in and of itself is not like a beautiful piece of art. It looks, I don't know, it looks like something that the 80s, uh, you know, sort of um, chew, chewed up and spat out and didn't want to have back or something. Um, but anyways, it was still a really fun project and I really like the idea of doing designs that are not just sort of the shape of feathers or crystals as you might have seen on other project, projects I've done. And it's also different from the cross hatching, which is also really cool. Um, so I think I will do more with sort of weirder designs and, and perhaps more even more graphic looking designs and perhaps i could do other stuff like i mean now i want to do like a flower power marine or something and um, i don't know we'll see but it was a really fun project what do you so what do you think um what do you think of the ideas what do you think of the execution do you have any suggestions for other sort of um designs i might try out in the future um any sort of thoughts and comments please uh, please leave them uh, in the comment section below and uh, remember, if you want to stay up to date on my painting projects, you can follow me as Dyson Demons on Twitter and Instagram as well. So uh, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.